Well, before I go to bed, I gotta make a video. Oh yes. So, what do I do on these videos? I got a lot of the same material. So I got no choice really but to nap the same kind of stuff. I bifaced this earlier in the week or maybe more than a week ago. It's going to be narrow. So I thought it might be a good good uh, demonstration for the video. Six and a half. Yep. Let's see what I can do. Let's see what I can do with it. Which gloves should I use? It don't really much matter. I feel like throwing them, throwing them all away at this point. Of course, I could be start wrapping them with tape again. Nah. I went through that stage already. I'll just buy new gloves. Nice tone on this Georgia Chert Flint River. Mm -hmm. Comes in big pieces. Six and a half or six and a quarter. Not too shabby. Nope. All right, so I'm gonna thin down this this side first. It's, it's got a little curvature to it, so I gotta uncurvitize it. So the auction went well. It's always going pretty good. Yeah, a couple people had issues with their connection. As always, someone always has a trouble with connections to YouTube. Someone always has trouble. But for the most part, I think everything went smoothly. So I'm, I'm working on my napping list, my nap in, not napping, nap in list. Uh, well, some some of my subscribers already sent in uh, information on their local nappings, which is good. If you have any information or if you've already sent me information, just go ahead and send it to me again or it doesn't matter. It's better to have more, more copies than no copies of the nap in information you can send it to my email I'm making a list and checking it twice yeah you can go to the nap in whether you're naughty or nice they don't care believe me <laughs> oh you don't know what happens when when all the tourists leave and all it is is just a bunch of nappers at night they don't go, eh, everybody left, let's all go to bed. No, that's not what happens. Oh, no. There's some shenanigans going on at night. What kind of shenanigans, you might ask? What kind of shenanigans do flit nappers get into? They're just minding their own business type of guys. Sitting there... Chipping on stones and mind their own business. What's going on at the nappings? I'm not telling you. Nope. It's like a secret society. You can't tell what goes on. 
I just call it shenanigans. That's it. You gotta come and find out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Only way to know is if you come to visit and find out for yourself. Of course, I've been to nap-ins that are pretty tame. But I've been to nap-ins where I didn't get any sleep. Yeah. Never, you never know. Do I have any stories? First thing someone asked me. Do you have any stories? I don't got no stories. No. YouTube algorithm probably misinterpret my stories. Yeah. Put me on a watch list. The other thing people ask me first thing is, do they do they go on stone searching missions at the nap in where you just go and search for stones and you can get three thousand pounds down by the river? Is that what they do? Because I'm not gonna watch the nap in is. I'm not gonna watch the nappers. I'm gonna go collect a bunch of rocks. That's what I'd wanna do. Sometimes I get people asking me that. I always say there's plenty of rock for sale. Cause someone's already done that legwork. You might think picking up stone for free is without cost. I wish. I wish. You're going to spend money on gas. You're going to spend plenty of money on gas. It's funny how some people spend a lot of money on gas, but they won't spend... They won't spend five bucks on a nice piece of rock. Let's spend 200 bucks on gas and get rocked. It doesn't look that's good, as good. But it's free. Yeah. Supposedly. Supposedly. It's $200 free. Yeah. I've gotten $200 free stone before. I spent easily I've spent that much on gas on some of my expeditions and yeah just one expedition and uh, I live in Texas or at least part of the year now I live in Texas right not er not all year long but it's supposedly the land of Chert and Flint and it actually is but it's all on private property oh yeah there's some on public property and uh, it's in the form of gravels and stuff. And you can get a, a nodule here, nodule there pretty easily. If you know where to look, there's a lot of public waterways. Sometimes you can get, you can see flint along the waterway. I'm not going to tell you, because if I do, whatever's there will be gone in no time. That's how bad it is. It's not that the, they use the stone either. Some guys just collect stone just to have it, just in case they need to sell it eventually. They'll just grab it all up. Better to have it than not have it. That's what they always say. Better have it and not nap it than not have any. Yeah. 
then they go to the nap and then they figure out who to sell it to. Yep. Little bitty flakes, little bitty cruddy flakes. Look at that. Yeah, you can make arrowheads out of it. Am I gonna make a little arrowhead out of one of these little flakes? These little bitty, little bitty, uh, I want to say, yeah, just, just a little bitty, little bitty brown ant flakes or what do they call it what do they call those little honey colored ants those that's what those flakes remind me of those little honey colored ants get there am I gonna get thin enough to make good video content oh that's dangerous dangerous yeah ouch I gotta start regularizing it instead of just looking for big opportunistic flakes opportunistic flakes here and there you probably can't tell how hard I'm hitting this. If you have headphones, it probably still doesn't help because the YouTube or the volume adjusts itself so loud sounds are not going to bust your eardrums. But I'm hitting this blade pretty hard. And I get that comment at nap-ins. I didn't realize you hit that stone that hard. No, nope, it doesn't go. It doesn't come through on the video. It really doesn't. It looks like I'm just barely tapping it, like it's made of hard candy or something. I'm just barely tapping it. I wish. It looks like hard candy. It looks like I'm barely tapping it. Oh no. Even this, these little flakes I'm doing right there, probably harder, tapping harder than you think I am. And then some of you guys go overboard and hit too hard. They go, well, okay, you're going to hit hard? All right, I'll, I'll start hitting hard. Yeah, you hit hard enough to create a, a disturbance in the force. Not that hard. I know some of you guys can create disturbances. There are forces of nature, some of you guys. Yeah. Not that hard. Yeah, when you guys are striking the stone, you can reverse the polarity of the poles. North pole becomes south pole. That's how hard you guys hit. Not that hard. Oh, I just got my finger. It just drove a flake into my finger. That's why I have that that thing there because a lot of times the flakes just go Shh. that's why I have the hole right there because that's where a lot of the flakes travel. Alright, I'm going to have to do this. i bring out the old tape. Didn't want to do it. Duct tape helps a lot. It's a good invention. Wish I invented it. Of course, if I invented it, no one would believe me. Yeah, you didn't invent anything like that. You can't even come up with a good YouTube name. Through channel.
Yeah. That's what they say. So what am I going to do with this? I just messed up myself right there. Mm-hmm. I just messed up myself. Now, there's a hole on that side. I have no idea how I'm going to fix that. If I take it back, I'll have to take it back way too far to get past that hole. So I'm just going to leave this edge the way it is pretty much. I might thin down the other side. Let's see. So funny that sometimes it's sometimes it does step fracture, doesn't it? I was saying the other day it's not step fracturing, and look what it's doing. Some of these stones have a mind of their own. Some of these stones have a mind of their own. This stone has a mind of its own. Yeah, look at that. This one is steppy. Some of you guys saying, all of my stones like what you got, what you're working on. All of my stones like that. Really? You say, you say, oh yeah, all my stone is like that. All my stone, no matter what I do. It's always a step fracture. Always. Well, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to hit it hard enough to put a wobble in the orbit of the planet. <laughs> I hit it so hard, there's a wobble now in the Earth's, Earth's uh, rotation. Mm -hmm. That's how hard I hit that sucker. I ain't, I ain't kidding around. <laughs> I got some guys having trouble napping rhyolite that want to talk to you. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. Some of these guys napping rhyolite over there. They can't make nothing with it because they can't hit hard. They need some advice. Yep. I got some rhyolite videos where I use a hammer. Ball peen hammer. I pretend I don't mess around. I pretend. I use the hammer. It does the job pretty good, but I should be using. Oh, a friend of mine just sent me a brass, a big brass bar, a, bar, a round bar stock. And I, I didn't bring it into the shop. Scott. Scott sent me a big, two big pieces of brass. I'm going to start using them, even though I told everybody for many years that brass is kind of bouncy and it's not really that good. I'm, I'm going to make some, I'm going to make some points with that silly bouncy stuff. Yep. I get all excited. Yeah, so I might be able to con contribute to the force disturbances. Yeah. Start wailing on the stone with that big brass bar. Yeah, it's like a big... Let's see. What, the, what is the diameter? It's like, it's like this, except it's not 6061 aluminum. This is 6061 aluminum. Something like this, but made out of brass. It's a it's a heavy sucker. And it's already it's already been broken in too. It's starting to mushroom on one end. So I know, I know someone's been creating some seismic waves, confusing the geologists wherever you are. Yeah, some of them neppers are confusing the geologists over there. Here's some seismic activity up here. What's going on? It's only located in this one area.
It seems to be rhythmic too. It's like, tick, and then there's a little jump. There's a little tick every so often. Tick, tick, like so, like it's a man-made thing. Yeah. Mm hmm I've seen you guys. I've heard you guys. I've been at nap ins and I get woken up by that stuff. Who is in the napping pit still pounding away on some of that stuff? I look over there. Sure enough, life, the light's still on. I hear people talking. And once in a while I hear a big crack. Big old crack. <laughs> Yeah. That's when I know they're they're uh, bringing out some good stuff. They don't want no one else to see. No. And by the time we get back there in the morning, we've got it all broken down already. Nothing to see here, folks. You missed it. We already broke it down. We brought it out last night, so you couldn't see how big it was. Nope. It's a secret. Secret stash, secret honey hole where we get this stuff. We ain't telling nobody. <laughs> yep. I ain't telling nobody except the hardcore, hardcore nappers. The new guys must be watching them like crazy because I always hear from the new guys that after they've been to a nap in, they go, well, I, I saw someone made a 12-inch blade at the nap in. That must be pretty common, huh? 12-inch blades. I saw it. 12-inch blade made us a red jasper. I saw it. So where are you guys hiding out? Where are you guys hiding that stuff? No, dude. You, you just witnessed a very rare occurrence. It's not usual. You must have stayed up really late. Or got in with a group of guys who didn't know you were a newbie. Yeah. Because that stuff's rare. You're thinking, how can it be rare? I'm a new guy and I saw it right away. Just like it was nothing. Yeah, that's what happens. And just my luck. They asked me, where do I get them 12 inch long spalls of red jasper? Where do I get them? I know you guys got them. <laughs> I wish. We're going to have to settle for this honey colored stuff. Yeah, flit napping overlaps with rock hounding. Oh yes, you've been if you've been in this long enough, it'll overlap with rock hounding. Looking for rocks of special types. Knowing where to find after a while you know where to find stuff. In most cases, some cases, no, you, everything just gets exhausted right away, so yeah, it was good for a little while, but we saw the big old truck tire tire truck tracks there one day and it was all gone yeah some guy with a big old truck came in that's it then that's it
Yeah, this might have been easier if I heat treated this stuff, but it's also more risky to take these big old gouge outs, but I don't know if I'm doing any good. I gotta make this even more narrow to get down in into this into these lumps because I'm getting step step fractures and I'm taking risks trying to keep it wide. Yeah. See when you try to keep it wide, you do the minimum amount of preparation on the on the striking areas and on the platforms. You do the minimum preparation. Cause you don't want to lose width. I don't want to lose the width on this, but I'm gonna have to. And I, I knew I was gonna have to, probably, when I started. But it, it gets you. Well, it gets me used to the limits on the stone. Whenever there's an inconsistency, that's when I usually run into trouble. I straightened it out kind of good. But yeah, these these inconsistencies, these areas where it just the, the flakes don't run. And uh, these avoidance areas, you know, like there's a there's a hole right there. I don't know how far it goes in, but this is an, an avoidance area, and you'll probably notice as the time goes on I'm gonna to have to send a big flake through that area because everything is starting to back up and get all steppy next to it these steps will pile up in the area where you're avoiding and lumps will pile up in the area where you're avoiding so you're gonna to have to eventually hit that area and it's not going to be pretty in many cases Yep. Dang it. Oh, this is uh, this is behaving like a raw piece of stone. Of course, I am doing minimal preparation on the edges. Yeah, and it shows too, cause man, I could have could have done a little bit better than that. I don't want to grind it too much because then it pulls too much. Yeah, just like that. Just like that will be all right. Nice. A lot of times you can't do that unless it's heat treated. You can't blow through some of the step fracturing unless it's heat treated. A lot of times. Not all the time. If, it's a, if the stone is cooperative, sometimes you can blow through the step fractures. And that's oh so nice. I was just able to do part of that, part of the steppy area right there. Okay, so it makes it easier for the, maybe I can get it from the other side, although that's risky. The more narrow I go, the less risky it gets as far as the flake length, but the more risky it gets as far as the bending and snapping. The bending and snapping. Why is there always such a thing as bending and snapping? Can it just for once stop all the snapping? Can it just take a break? I don't want it to be so snappy. Snappy is supposed to be a good term. It's supposed to be something that's good. Yeah. Make it snappy. Come on. Snap your fingers. Make, make it snappy there. Yeah, flit napping, you can't say that. Everyone look at you like you've lost your mind. Ha <laughs> ha. Easy to lose your mind on this stuff. Oh yes. 
How thin do I want to go? I'm going to go as, as thin as possible. That's what everybody wants. There's no limit to how thin you go. Just go. That's what everybody says. Tell me everything you know about thinning. And go as thin as possible in every video. As thin as humanly possible. Don't hold back. Because I want to see. <coughs> yeah, you and me both. But I want to see someone else do it. Go as thin as possible. I usually go as thin as the as thin as I think the the odds will let me. Cause them odds will catch up to you. Oh yes. You heard about the house always wins? Mm-hmm. You gotta learn to be the house when you're doing flint napping. You can't be the players. No. You gotta learn to be the house. So you gotta rig it in your favor. You don't wanna go as thin as humanly possible. Nope. We leave that to the people who who are addicted to taking risks. Oh yeah. Now you want a cool head. You don't want to take too many risks, but you got to be aggressive. There's a delicate balance there between the risk and the aggressiveness. As I always say. And yeah, you can shape I'm shaping with my abrader. I had a guy comment very recently, today in fact, I think, that I just casually shape it with the abrader. But he spelled the abrader in a weird way. <laughs> anyway, some people, they're watching my old videos and they think I just made that video. You know, seven or eight years old video, and they go, "Dang, it's this video's old." And they tell me this video's old. Didn't realize it. Yeah, it's true. Some of my videos are pretty old. Hope they're still relevant because I'm not going through and checking them all. I gotta go through all of them and adjust the the ad placement because there's too many with the mid roll ads. Too many still with the mid roll ads. I hate those. I don't like them. No. So am I going human? Am I going as thin as humanly possible on this one? No, but I am going to go pretty thin. We'll see in the end. It's probably not more than 5 to 1, though, with the thickness ratio. 6 to 1 is my usual, I suppose. Any thinner than that, and I'm really rolling the dice and putting everything on one number. Yep. I 
bet my whole basket of eggs on one number on some of these points. Sometimes I just need that one flake. Everyone goes through that. Every napper does that one flake. I just need this one flake. Just give me this one flake. Just let me win this last roll of dice. Just let me win it. I'll never risk this much again. <laughs> just let me win it. watching a video today I've been watching a lot of wartime uh, World War II documentary type videos and stuff and my son notices I was watching that and he comes up oh so you watch that youtuber blah 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 yeah yeah I watched blah 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 you know what this guy is oh yeah yeah I, I was I'd been there done that <laughs> Here I am, I'm thinking I'm learning new stuff. I'm gonna look at the subscribers. Yeah, the guy has got, you know, 500,000 subscribers. Go, dang. I'm jealous. All I gotta do is look up stuff on World War II and regurgitate it, and you get 500,000 followers. Dang it. What's up with that? Anyway. I studied, or I listened to audiobooks and I watched documentaries. And the the uh, Russian, the Russian front or the Eastern front. from either perspective, the Russian or the German perspective, highly, highly interesting stuff. To me, anyway, I'm not really into military history all that much, but that particular conflict, yeah, it was politicized. It was politicized. And you had, you had people up and down, up and down the the, uh, the units installing or ensuring political discipline. Make sure they were following or obeying certain political doctrines. Yeah. In wartime, I think political correctness is new. Political correctness is not new. So, look what happened. Look at it. It took a bite out, but it's a bending flake, so it's good. Just like overshots are good, right? Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's one of those times where you go, just give me that, just give me that win. I'm gonna roll one more time on the dice. That's what I want, just one more win. And guess what? Dang it. And then I hit a, hit that hoping that would skin that off but it didn't it didn't skin it off what am I gonna do I don't know make a tiny point I don't want to make a big point yeah it's 
So I will just crudely and aggressively attack that step fracture with the tool. A little lumpy spot. I don't know. This is going to get ridiculously narrow. Looks like I'm going to get narrow no matter what, right? Yeah. See where that hole is? Eventually, I think I'm going to have to take that back all the way. Yeah. All the way to where that hole is. And to fix that, that's going to be a pain in the butt. That's going to be a pain to get that step right out of there. So why am I showing you this? Well, I knew this was going to cause fits because when I, I remember bifacing it and some of these are not that easy to net. You know, it has a bunch of inconsistencies in it. But, they're not impossible. They just will give you some little irritating problems. And I probably didn't grind it enough. You know, one little area. Let's see. Did it do it? Almost, I got a little bit left, and that little bit can can might be pressure flaked off of there. Let's see. Ooh, nice tone. Let's see. Let's see if it'll pressure flake off of there. Did it do it? Ooh, almost. Getting there. Was there a step fracture there before? Doesn't look that way. Some of you might be saying, oh, you just made drama. You just invented the drama. That was not a big deal. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Okay. I wish. You never know how those are going to come out. Never do. And uh, I'm still taking risks with it. I got to even it out. I got to regularize it. Sometimes the regularizing is the, the, the sweatiest part of the whole thing. Sometimes I gotta work in a very delicate area. I gotta make sure I don't install any steps. Some of you carpenters out there. I love installing steps and stairs cases, yeah. <laughs> Not those kind of steps. This is a napping video. Flint napping. You don't want to install steps and staircases. You don't want to stack anything. Yep. No stacks, no steps, no hinges, none of that. Stuff's bad in flint napping. It's good in carpentry, but bad in flint napping. I watch carpentry and electricians' videos and remodeling videos and all that kind of stuff, too. You guys don't watch any of that stuff. I know, I've been watching you. I've been watching what you watch. And you guys don't watch no remodeling videos. 
Ну. Угу. You guys rather watch videos on the crystal daggers of Egypt than watch remodeling videos. All right, there's a crystal dead crystal dagger in Egypt. Quartz crystal, some something like that. I don't know. So in case you don't know, I usually put these vi these uh, points I make on video up for auction. So this will be available. Yeah, I could stop right here and just let you guys finish it out. Yep. Shocking. That would be so shocking, huh? Why would I do that? Why would I let you guys try to finish it out and not show you my secrets? so out of character no sometimes I let you guys finish them out I just offer them up there was a long period of time on my channel where I didn't didn't concern myself with how much money these things are worth once in a while someone would ask me to do something I said okay but that in those days I had time uh, not much time per day, but I could take, you know, a couple of years to get it done. And it would be no big deal. Nowadays, I can't take that long. Nope. I got myself in a situation where I got to... I got to make my time productive with this stuff, because... I really don't want to do much else. Except maybe, you know, get back into building stuff. But I'm getting old. Yeah, I'm just, I'm looking at, looking at my knee. I messed up my knee a long time, my left knee. I messed that up a long time ago. I'm looking at it lately. It's getting kind of squishy. I gotta, I gotta learn some good exercises to strengthen my knee on my left side, cause it's getting all squishy, getting all weak. I've been sitting too long. Yep, I'm up to no good doing this flint knife and stuff. It's not good for my bones. <laughs> oh, that's a nice tone. I do like the tone of the stone. The tone, the stone tone. I do like it. It's one of the side benefits. You didn't know? Oh, yeah. Stone tones are a benefit, side benefit of flint napping. Oh, yeah. Okay, I wish I knew the terminology on those people who are experts at what tones create what moods and stuff <laughs> yeah the only to the only two moods i know when it comes to stone tones is ooh that's cool and dang that's annoying ah. that is so annoying those are the only two tones i know and yep there are some annoying stone tones you know what the worst one is? It's a very distinctive sound. You can hear it all the way across the napping arena. The tink. 
of a biface breaking in half. Yep, this guy's. You can always tell it's a, it's a slightly different for each type of stone, but you can tell. You hear that dunk, and it's like you know exactly what happened. <laughs> You don't even look over there because you don't want to see it. Nope. Don't want to see it. Just cover your eyes. It's ugly. It's an ugly reality. Mm hmm. But other than that, This tones while you're removing flakes. Certain snaps and tones. You can tell it's a good flake. Yep. If you hear nice clean snaps, you know it's working. You know it's working. You know your pressure flakers working just right. You hear a lot of crunching. Adjust your strategy somewhat. You don't want to hear crunching. Some people, some guys can get away with it. I'm looking over there at a nap and they're crunching away. It's all. But you look at what they made and it's beautiful. How do you do that? I don't know. That's the way I always do it. What do you mean? <laughs> How do you do it? You crunch in the whole time and I don't see no no crunches on the edge. How do you do it? I can't do that. Whenever I hear crunches, you look th down at the edge and I got nothing but white powdery step fractures all the way down. Yep. I gotta use a freaking spatula tool or I get all crunchery on the edges. Yep. I think what they're doing is they're using sharp tools. They got them sharp tools over there. I don't use them sharp tools. Why? Too much maintenance. Like I said a million times. Sure, I don't want to be sharpening my tools every five minutes. That's why my points don't look that good. I don't sharpen up my, my tools. I just make doo doo with what I got. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, I'm just going to continue with the knocking off the thick spots on the edge, going around making sure there's symmetrization going on. I still have remnants of that bite from earlier right there, but I'm not going to mess with it unless I have to. Yeah. Maybe if I figure out what to, I'm going to do with this, I can better, better, sh better shape it. I can shape it better if I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with it. I know what I'm going to do with it. I'm just going to continue to thin it down as far as I can without ruining it yeah I know the odds of doing certain things the house always knows the odds they got people they hired people to run the numbers
wish I had geniuses running the numbers on this so I know what what the exact probabilities are. I don't know. I don't. Maybe sometimes I don't want to know what the probabilities are. Some people will say, "Don't tell me the odds." We're gonna go do it. Don't tell me the odds. Yeah, never tell me the odds of success. We're just gonna go do it. We're gonna wing it. Maybe, maybe that's me too. Maybe I don't want to know the odds. We're just gonna do it. And get in there and wing it. And that's it. Yeah, it can't always be that way, though. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, especially when you start getting better at napping. People are going to want to, you to nap stuff for them. They'll ask really nicely. Because they want to see. They want to see how you do it. They want to see. If they had a microscope, they would be in there with the microscope. But they're not, so they got to settle for just sitting right in front of you. And their eyeballs burning holes in your tools. Them laser eyes are burning holes in your workpiece and your tools and they're staring at you and going so that's what you do so that's it lights are going on smoke's coming out of their ears and they're going all right i can see that now i'm gonna try that yeah <laughs> they get all giggly <laughs> i'm gonna try that oh yeah I'm going to steal that idea. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. I'm talking a lot about nap-ins because uh, this year, this past year, I've had so many requests to go to nap-ins. Everyone's asking me, you going to this one? You going to that one? You going to this one? I would love to go to all of them. That used to be my goal. Like one, one. Uh, at one point, my goal was just to be able to travel and go to all the nap-ins. But I don't know any. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to do that anymore. I kind of do. We'll see. I'd rather just make videos, to tell you the truth. I'm very unimpressive in the, at a napping. Yeah. I'm just, I just sit there with my nose to the grindstone the whole time. So to speak. Pun intended. I just sit there and nap the whole time. I don't really smooze. Schmooze? It's schmoozing right that's the terminology I do some schmoozing but I'm not good at schmoozing I'd rather make up flint napping words and talk smack yeah I'd rather sit there and symmetrize symmetrize my work pieces Buy a bunch of spa jewels from the, the guy selling rocks. Yep. I like to try some new stuff every once in a while. I'm gonna buy some odd looking spa jewels. You got anything odd over there that I can I can nap that I've never tried before? Especially in the spodule form, you know. Stuff that no one else wants to, to mess with. It's not a spodule. It's not a spall. It's not a nodule. 
It's kind of in between. It's an in-betweener. Someone broke into it and said, I don't want to mess with it. You get any of those? There you go. <laughs> Have we got a deal for you? <laughs> two for one deal. We got two for one special going on them spodules over there. You do? Awesome. Sweet. I like them two for ones. Yeah. Buy one nasty rock, get one free. I love those. Some of you might be saying, really? Uh, well, no, not really. But I have been known to do it. <laughs> Especially if it's interesting stuff. Interesting looking to me, anyway. You know, flint nappers are to get a special eye for these things. It might be interesting to them. People can't figure out why. We know why. Yeah. Okay, where's my file? Sometimes, well, one of the last nap-ins I went to, some guy came up to me with a bunch of little, uh, little really thin slabs, you know, like sixteenth of an inch thick slabs. He said, "You ever nap any of these?" I said, "No." <laughs> Sorry for giggling, but no, I've never napped in that thin. Well, now's your chance. Let's see. I suppose so. Hand them over. Yeah, so he handed them over. He knew he was going to end up handing them over. That's why he brought them over. I don't think he was expecting to walk back with him. No. They know me too well. Yep. Still haven't napped on them, though. I don't like doing the slabs, but... I felt like it would be a, an interesting challenge to nap a slab that's less than a sixteenth of an inch thick. How do you nap those? Well, I heat treated them first. I got a batch of them sitting there. Brazilian agate and that kind of stuff. These were like end cutoffs where the last cut was really, really thin or the first cut's really, really thin. You know, when you're slabbing a bunch of stones, you get these cutoffs that are not usable for the normal guys. So you stick them in a jar. Maybe some YouTube napper is going to take an interest in them. They're right. Anyway, we'll see. I think napping a thin slab is harder than napping a thin flake. And not because of the running the flakes themselves. That's that's pretty straightforward. It's harder because you got to get rid of the the flat slabby surface. Yeah, you got to get rid of the whole the whole slabby surface of that. It's not easy. In fact, it's a pain in, pain in the wazoo. Yeah, you can mess those up easy. And then you got to get real narrow, like I'm doing now. I can nap a real thin slab as long as it's super narrow. Oh yeah. But that's cheating. It's cheating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
All right, almost done. I could have been done a long time ago, but I, I chose to continue because I knew I was going to have to do this anyway. If I didn't do it on camera, I'd have to touch it up off camera. I still need to touch it up a little bit. All right. But that's good enough for now. My, my knees is getting stiff. I need to work it out. All right. Where's the... How much did I lose? Six and a half. What was it before? I don't know. Look at the beginning of the video. <laughs> Let's see. I think it was two two inches before, right? At least I don't know. Let's see. What is that? One and mm -hmm, thirteen sixteenths. Yeah, something like that. One and thirteen sixteenths. Stupid measuring system. All right. So I try to get all the step fractures out of it. I'm gonna offer it as a leaf shaped blade I might take this back or I might just leave that divot in there I think I'll just leave it in there I'll leave it raw I could I could sharpen it more and that might take it back enough that you wouldn't notice where there was that bite taken out my hands are small remember this is going to look bigger than it really is it's not that big actually I am going to save some of these bitty little bitty flakes, these little sugar ant flakes. All right, right. I got a batch of heat tree going over there. I got to fill it up. It's only halfway full. Yeah, I got to think of the next project. I got so much of this stuff. I don't want to get sick and nap in the butterscotch. Although it would take me several more pounds of this to get sick of it because I like it. It's my favorite color. Oh, yeah. I can nap it down so it'll be thin and translucent. Nothing better than butterscotch. Yeah. This is the part I like. I like looking at the the result. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It's sharp. Yep. I could put one of them turkey tail bases on it. I could. But I'm not. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> 